Aloha Aina, and welcome to A Violation of Trust, a Voices of Truth special report brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Kai Opua Fife. By now, most of us have heard about the attempts to allow drilling for oil in the uh, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska. And some of you may know that the native peoples who live on that, uh, those lands are staunchly opposed to the drilling. However, what many of you may not know is the direct connection be between the attempts to drill for oil in that part of Alaska and the connection to the impending or threatening passage of uh, the Akaka Bill that's going to have such a huge impact here in Hawaii if it, if it survives. Uh, certain individuals have played a significant and secret role in selling both native Alaskans and native Hawaiian interests away in order to realize personal gain. And in order to find out more about this, uh, we have with us today uh, Mike Williams, who's the uh, vice chair of the Alaska Intertribal Council. Mike, I'm glad to have you with us. Good it's a pleasure here. to meet you. And Robert Thompson from Koktovik, who we've met previously and spent some time together on Kauai about a year ago. And uh, we appreciate seeing you again, and we're glad that you're back. Uh, we hope that this time we can uh, help to have a raise the awareness in Hawaii of what the real situation is up there in Anwar, and what the politics of this are, and how they actually uh, relate between Alaska Natives, the indigenous people of Alaska, and the Native Hawaiians here in Hawaii. Because we want to get the story straight, and that's the whole purpose of this filming. We've been get some uh, bad information, to say the least, in the past, and we're, we welcome the opportunity to, to have you folks here to speak with us uh, today. Mike, would you like to uh, kind of maybe for openers uh, introduce yourself a little more fully? I know that you have the, the vice chairmanship uh, as an identifying label, but I know there's more to you than that. And uh, part of our part of our, our our talking to our people here in Hawaii is to uh, let them get to know a little bit about the individuals we're, we're interviewing. Yeah, my name is Mike Williams. Um, I'm a Yupat from uh, Akiak, Alaska. It's in western Alaska, a small village, uh, and I have been involved uh, with tribal issues uh, in Alaska for the last 30 years and, uh, and trying to uh, figure out how uh, we can uh, restore our um, lands and our resources back to our tribes in Alaska and uh, to save our uh, lands and our resources for the future. And uh, it has been a daunting uh, process uh, that I've um, um, experienced over the years uh, with discussions of, um, of um, uh, when I first uh, started to discuss the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act of 1971, I was in high school still. Mm -hmm. And uh, we studied that for three years, and uh, uh, the conclusion was uh, that um, we do not support uh, the ANCSA bill. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we didn't have any way to uh, relay that message to those folks that are making uh, decisions in Washington, D.C. Mm. Could you give us a little background on what ANCSA means? Because well, it's on very Dece important. Yeah, right on uh, December 18, 1971, uh, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was passed by Congress and sign signed by uh, uh, President Nixon uh, on December 18, 1971. My concern when we studied that um, uh, land claims was the extinguishment of our hunting and fishing rights and the extinguishment of our Aboriginal title to the land. Mm -hmm. And um, more importantly, the um, lands that were uh, going to be selected would be under the state jurisdiction. And um, you know, it's unlike any other treaty or any other land settlement with uh, the uh, rest of the United States uh, uh, tribes um, uh, in uh, in continental United States, right. and um, and uh, it's sort of uh, it was an experiment, and um, and one thing that uh, uh, that uh, land claims kept uh, was uh, our tribal sovereignty, 
and our tribal rights and our tribal governments. That is one area that, um, that um, I'm glad uh, it didn't touch. But, um, uh, you know, we as uh, uh, sovereign tribal governments do not own any land right now. We're landless uh, tribes, uh, but we have control over our members. Our mm -hmm. territories were lost at that time uh, to um, uh, state chartered corporations. You know, right now, um, my biggest fear is that our native corporations are um, looking to develop our lands at the cost of our um, human resources and al also our natural resources. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, uh, with the uh, issue of uh, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, it's a, it has been a hot topic. But the conclusion of the tribes, and we have 229 federally recognized tribes uh, in Alaska, uh, that um, uh, the uh, almost uh, the total majority of um, of uh, the tribes uh, oppose uh, uh, the development uh, or drilling uh, or exploration of uh, oil in Anwar mm -hmm. because of the um, because of the um, uh, threats that uh, we see to the land and to the uh, uh, tribes that are depending on uh, uh, the resources the natural resources that uh, depend on um, uh, the land there to survive mm -hmm. are going to be effective. Yeah, mm -hmm. the sustainable li lifestyle, and um, and also um, uh, the um, environment that uh, will have a huge impact uh, throughout uh, um, uh, the North Slope and uh, and uh, all of Alaska. And um, well, there's a there's a huge impact that is going to be felt here in Hawaii if uh, some people get their way because uh, what I'm beginning to fear is that this experiment, the ANCSA experiment, is going to become the pattern for the way that the United States relates to other indigenous groups such as Native Hawaiians uh, and other un so far unlisted tribes. Mm -hmm from this point forward. So to me it looks like the United States thinks that's exper that experiment in ANCSA is the perfect model to go forward with. I, uh, I have uh, different thoughts to that. Um, you know, we have discussed this issue with the tribes um, of Alaska uh, and the Intertribal Council for that matter. And uh, uh, that experiment, I think, uh, is designed to uh, uh, phase out uh, the Alaska Natives. Exactly. And um, and in the in one generation, from our um, from our um, research and discussions, uh, in one generation that our people are going to be wiped out. And um, and right now, um, uh, ever since uh, 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 that uh, uh, law became uh, uh, the law of the land mm -hmm. since 1971. I seen uh, twenty-eight dollars in thirty years. That's my dividend from my corporation. I'm a shareholder, mm -hmm. but five of my children are not shareholders, mm -hmm. and three of my grandkids are not shareholders, mm -hmm. and they have no interest. Unless if I uh, uh, leave my shares with them, but in the end, those uh, shares are going to evaporate mm -hmm. and going to end up um, in different pockets. Of no. people differently, no. and no. that's the danger of, uh, uh, of what I see. If we do not do any uh, anything about it at this point, our mm. children are going to have nothing. No. Period. Nothing. Well, the message for us here in Hawaii, uh, this helps to emphasize what we've essentially been uh, doing for the past several years, is to oppose federal recognition uh, for Hawaiians. Uh, no matter what what the model is, but what we're starting to see is that it appears that the ANCSA model is the one that Washington D.C. wants to foist on uh, on Native Hawaiians. And uh, I know it's complex for you folks because you have corporations and you have ownership within corporations, but then you also have 
federally rec recognized tribes, and then there are some that are not federally recognized, I guess. So there's quite a mix going on up there. And it sounds complicated, but if you're talking, I, I think basically whether it's the AXA model or what's existed previously for uh, uh, Native Americans, from my perspective, what this is all about is it's like the final nail in the coffin of the indigenous people, no matter where they reside, by resolving all settlements and dispossessing of lands and resources in exchange for some promises of federal funding and perhaps some dollars to come in through this corporate approach. Yeah, I would um, uh, like to uh, caution uh, the uh, Native Hawaiians um, uh, to agree to something that is limited. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Native Hawaiians um, uh, uh, deserve uh, uh, a lot more because uh, Native Hawaiians have lost big time uh, to of their lands and uh, and at one time from uh, the little uh, research that I have uh, there was 800,000 people here mm -hmm. and how many Native Hawaiians are now today and that, I think, uh, is a big <coughs> price that Hawaii Native Hawaiians paid in the past. Uh, I would uh, caution uh, going the Alaska way, um, but, um, you know, I, I'm not saying that um, I'm against the Kaka bill, but um, if there's going to be a bill, you need nothing but the best. You need, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, total... Uh, advantages uh, that you're going to survive into the future and the lands that you have and the restoration uh, that needs to take place both mm -hmm. here in Hawaii and also in Alaska mm -hmm. and in Alaska if uh, we do not see any restoration of uh, our lands back to the tribes and under the uh, protections that it needs um, mm -hmm. then we're going to lose it Yep. And that's how serious it is. Yep. It is. And um, again, um, I fully support uh, the Native Hawaiians to have nothing but the best. And um, they deserve uh, every sovereignty uh, that, um, that they have. And, um, and we like to have their support as well. And we support yep. the Native Hawaiians' full sovereign powers to uh, live uh, economically um, free and um, and um, and uh, we have the history for thousands of years uh, of our existence we've done a darn pretty good job of taking care of our people mm -hmm. and um, and I think we can uh, do that once again after we've learned so much of the uh, mistakes that the uh, federal policy has made towards the uh, first people here in the nation yeah. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's quite a mouthful as an introduction, Mike, uh, but uh, you're as impassioned as I know we are on, on this subject, and it's a, and it's a critical subject. It's a, it's a, I don't want to even use the word terminally critical, but uh, you're coming down here and helping us to understand what has happened to you and how we can help to support you. It's a, it's a mutual mutual exchange of support, and I certainly pledge my, my personal support to you folks. I really appreciate that and uh, the support for Alaska Native people is critical throughout the nation, mm -hmm. and um, and we need the help of uh, our brothers and sisters in uh, the rest of the continental United States to support us, mm -hmm. and we support their existence as well, and as we are under threat um, every day mm -hmm. of our existence and our tribal sovereignty. Well, let's, uh, let's hear from uh, Robert Thompson from Koktovik. Are you going to get a chance to get over to uh, my island of Kauai again this trip, or do you, or do you know? Are you going I don't know, but we'll be back someday. It's really nice there. Well, I, I so, appreciate uh, that. Yeah, we fell in love with Hawaiian. We sure appreciate the support we're getting from Hawaiian people. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, the, you know, the, uh, other, the reason I've you know, talked to people about why they're supporting us, and, the, and, they, and it's uh, been said that they suffered the uh, adverse effects of corporations Previously, like the large corporations with the uh, the farming that mm -hmm. was done and dis displaced people, but we're running into that same situation uh, on the North Slope. We've got large corporations, and in this case, the corporations have been, uh, you know, uh, well, they were created for our own people. These are for-profit corporations, and uh, they're trying to displace the the the, the people, the actual people that uh, are going to be affected. Mm -hmm. 
It's a for-profit corporations, and uh, and they're mandated by law to to act to make money. And, and what the things that they're doing are going to, you know, have a potential for devastating our culture. Our hunting areas are being affected. On the North Slope, we're having uh, just about 100 percent of the North Slope is being made available for oil production. 100 percent of the ocean environment is being put up for uh, uh, lease. And there's just one small area that's protected in the wilderness area, but all the rest of the whole North Slope, in, in, and it's uh, well, it's 95 percent is available right now for for oil development. It's one of the things that the public doesn't know. This area that they're proposing that uh, uh, the senators from Hawaii voted to uh, for for drilling is five percent of what's available on North Slope. We're trying to save that for for our future mm -hmm. uh, generations. So I think. Uh, in this regard, if people can learn the facts on this issue and, and find out wh why they're doing this and, and to know that there is plenty of oil in the North Slope separate from this refuge, that's mm -hmm. one of the facts the American public ha hasn't been uh, uh, you know, informed of. Right. They're always led to believe that you know, we've got to do this or you're going to run out or we're going to be riding bicycles and I mean, any, we won't have fuel for our mm -hmm. jet planes to protect the democracy. The, the fact is there's plenty of oil separate from the refuge. Uh, and it sounds like there's plenty of land separate from it. I'm glad you mentioned those uh, those quantities. Uh, Five percent is what constitutes roughly the Anmar that, That's area uh, the figure that we're using, and nobody has contested that. It's so about five percent of ninety-five percent is already open and available. No, well. no, it's, uh, it's part of it's in National Petroleum Reserve, which ultimately is available for production. It has to be done with uh, some environmental assessment. So our senator will say that it's not available, and technically he would be right. It's not available today until it's been reviewed uh, for environmental yeah. concerns. Uh, so he's kind of misleading the yeah. American public when he says this. But it is, or will be, and it's a shame that that's going to be uh, mm, turned into an oil field. Right. But but there's not a whole lot we can do about it. But uh, is, there is a lot of land up there that they can develop for oil. Right. Well, you know, when, you, when we're talking about lands and quantities of lands and uh, opening for development, uh, I just returned from Geneva and I uh, met, uh, had to go to Geneva to, met, to meet a delegation of Western Shoshone people. Uh, and they recount somewhat the same situation that they've been told now that their lands are, are open for development and no consultation with them, but it's like highest and best use for industrialists, mining, and the tribe receives no benefit from that at all. And it's their traditional mm -hmm. lands. Yeah. Well, that's happening, uh, and my w one reason for opposing the, the development of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, it's a stepping stone to offshore. Those areas are being leased, uh, have been leased, and it's a pending uh, state lease sale. So the, these will be... Uh, eventually uh, developed, which will affect our uh, our hunting culture, the whaling, the uh, right. marine mammals, the Ocean fish. Ocean resources. Yeah. Right. So that's, you know, it's potential that they could be gone if there's a spill in that area. You know, I came back, coming back from Europe, I, uh, I stopped over in California and there was uh, uh, some concern being expressed that with Anwar being opened up and the other potential ocean, ocean side uh, drilling occurring. Now the people in California are, are afraid that what's going to happen is they're going to be vi violated with agreements they've had previously that there wouldn't be oil drilling down the west coast of California. But they're starting to see that there's a, a big potential for that occurring off the California coast. Well, and that's getting a little too close to home for them. Well, yeah, I, sp I suppose that they, Congress, uh, the people that want this development could use the same vehicle, the budget bill, to uh, exploit that oil if it works on the North Slope. Well, I think that's what the people in California are realizing, that uh, all it takes is a stroke of a pen and a vote of the, on the floor of uh, Congress and an uh, administration that uh, that supports it, and all bets are off on just about anything. That's the scary thing about the relationship with the federal government is uh, uh, there is no... They, they talk about consultation, but they don't talk about there being any possible actual input beyond consultation. So what's threatening to California uh, 
middle class citizens now is it's coming right down to where they are. You know, it's one thing when something happens in somebody else's backyard, up above the North Slope or Anwar, Alaska. It's another thing when it happens down in California, and I'm wondering whether or not these people feeling threatened might have any beneficial impact on, on what might happen up in Alaska. Any, any feel for that, or do you have even anything about it? Well, I think it's been said that, it, you know, by the Republicans that if they can do this up there, they can go just about anywhere. Yeah. So I think uh, since that's been said, that they should be very concerned about right. what, what is going on on the North Slope. Because yeah. uh, I, I believe the more people know about what's up there, the more they want to save it. You know, it's been t said to be a wasteland, a ice, ice. desert, uh, yeah. good for nothing place, good for nothing but oil development, but there's there's uh, a lot of biodiversity there. And uh, it's probably more types of wildlife in that area than just about anywhere else in the United States. Well, yeah, I, I remember hearing that statement. I think it was by uh, uh, that 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 was a waste, a white wasteland up there, and that was by uh, what is it? Uh, uh, our senator former, uh, was it Senator Mikowski? Mikowski, like a white sheet of paper. Yeah, uh, Gail right. Martin said it's a white nothingness. Exactly, and Department yeah. Secretary. Well, Department we always put it in the terms that uh, you know to, to sound like it's uh, like you know, toss-offs. Yeah. yeah, it's like. The, it should should be oil development because it's good for nothing else. And they've right. said it in those terms, but uh, right. when people start learning about it, and if the American public makes an effort to learn about the wildlife and the culture and the, uh, the people there, and, and uh, you know, the, we want to preserve a culture. Well, one of the films that, uh, that you, the film that you accompanied to Hawaii last year, I think really uh, communicated, you know, the reality of what's up there. And I think people, when they watch that, realize this is not a, a white uh, wasteland that uh, you know there are people who live there and there are resources there and there are plants and animals and some of the discussions that you had in the panel following that film were, were quite interesting as to you know some of the related dynamics between Alaska and Hawaii and the things that went on to help promote uh, uh, the passage of this uh, bill that will allow for drilling uh, we thought you'd uh, made a pretty good, uh, pretty good case, and uh, I guess the deal being made in D.C. allowed for that, that drilling component to be tagged on to the, the budget, the budget measure. But it's still not really totally done, is it? No, no. I think uh, you know, as more people realize how, how these deals are made. Uh, we're, we're concerned about the deal that appears to have been made in Hawaii here with uh, Senator Kaka. He previously was in support of refuge uh, preserving the refuge, and now right. he's uh, advocating development. Mm -hmm. Senator Stevens in Alaska was uh, has never been supportive of uh, uh, indigenous sovereignty, native people sovereignty, mm -hmm. but he's supporting the sovereignty bill here, which you know may well be the best thing to do. But the, but the fact is, he doesn't support sovereignty among the native people in Alaska. So mm -hmm. when we look at it, it looks like they made some sort of an agreement because they both switched their uh, positions to accommodate the other right. side. So, so I'd say the Hawaiian people should really very carefully look at this uh, sovereignty bill to see that it, you know, if there's any flaws in it, like what, what we've come to realize has been the, the flaws in the Native Claims Settlement Act in Alaska. Right. There's people going to be uh, separated from their, uh, from their uh, native rights and what, mm -hmm. what they've had for thousands of years if, sure. if it's not done correctly. Yeah. So. Well, we've had, uh, you know, we, we, look, we can look at the, the history of uh, Native American tribes, recognized Native American tribes, and uh, many of them are now just beginning to realize what their relationship with the United States has, uh, has created uh, as they ra rise up and look around and realize that their assets indeed have been essentially bought off that their that their resources, their lands, are uh, diminishing, and and the the scary thing is that any time Congress convenes, they can change any of the deal on their side at all, and that's uh, that's what's kind of scary for us. We saw, you know, we talked about ocean resources, and the uh, Commonwealth of Northern Marianas Islands, which has a uh, an agreement with the United States, um, supposedly mutually beneficial. Uh, I was out there in Saipan last year, and there were rumblings that perhaps the U.S. was actually going to claim all of the 
the, the ocean resources. A couple of weeks ago, it, it indeed was confirmed that the U.S. informed the Commonwealth, oh, by the way, everything in the ocean is ours and we'll be developing that, and they actually have corporations that are lined up to start exploiting those. So this is an island nation, by the way, surrounded by water. That's their relationship with, that's, that's part of their being. So I think we're at a point in turning around, seeing things more clearly and more truthfully, and then uh, moving forward from this point. Uh, you folks are going to be, I think, showing, having another film festival uh, while you're here. Yes, there will be various films. Is related. the film that was shown last, when you were last here, going to be one of those? Uh, well, I was here with a slideshow. It won't, it won't be part of this presentation. Okay. There was a slideshow by Shamankar Banerjee, who did a book on the refuge. Yeah. Uh, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, Seasons of Life and Land. Yeah. So it shows the beauty of the land there, and uh, yeah. it's been you know, quite effective in letting people be informed right. you know, what they're going to lose if uh, this yeah. happens. I want to thank you both for, for uh, taking time uh, out of what could possibly be a day of rest otherwise. Uh, did both of you just arrive today? or Yes. Uh, just, just flew in? Yeah, I just flew in, and uh, I'm kind of a little jet-lagged. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I like to, um, you know, again say... Um, uh, aloha to uh, all the Hawaiian folks, and uh, and uh, you know I just uh, want so much uh, uh, so much uh, benefits to our uh, people and the protections that we need and the help we need uh, right now. And uh, I think uh, we can take this uh, opportunity to do the right thing for all of the Native Hawaiians and all of the Alaska Natives. And um, that is, you know, this is an opportunity to do, do it right. And, um, and um, you know, I think um, uh, I would urge um, the senators from here um, to uh, uh, listen to the people. And um, I've been dealing with it for 30 years now up there. And, um, and we're uh, about time to make some moves that uh, will be in the best interest of our tribes and uh, also Native Hawaiians. Well, appreciate it. Thanks again, Mike. Mm -hmm. And Robert, we uh, look forward, glad to see you again, and look forward to seeing you over the course of the next few days. Uh, thanks very much for uh, being with us. Uh, this has been a violation of trust. Voices of Truth special report brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Kai Okua Fife. Mahalo Nui. <laughs>